There is no pre-intro today. I'm the pre-intro. You know why? Because Nikolai Ehlers is a fucking dog, baby. Get ready to fly. Ladies and gentlemen, and it's an afternoon game. Isn't that a lovely slice of hell? Whenever there's an afternoon game, it gets involved in my work, but thankfully I was able to see all of this game in its entirety. Welcome! This is your first time tuning in. My name is Zachary Dolan. Pleasure to meet you. Um, I cover every single Winnipeg Jets game of the season and a bunch of other stuff of Winnipeg Jets content. If you are a fan of the Winnipeg Jets, or even if you're not, you will play us eventually. So if you could hit the subscribe button, we would really appreciate that. We're trying to make a push for 2,000, 2, 2, 0, 0, 0, 1,000 subscribers by the end of the playoffs this season. We appreciate you all for tuning in. If this, if this is not your first time, welcome back. And oh boy, are we excited, aren't we, lads? The Jets win 2-1 to one in overtime. Over the Ottawa Senators, we got a lot to cover here. Let's get into it. The first period is fine. It's fine. I didn't. I didn't really throw. I didn't like a lot of the first. I didn't. I. I don't want to say I didn't like a lot of this game because I can't. The big stories with this team is that their center depth is really weak. Like the centerman depth for the Jets right now is a third liner playing on the first line, a set, uh, a second liner who we started out with the. Uh, the thought process that he could be a fourth liner on the second line, uh, a f guy who was put, who was brought up from the Manitoba Moose on our third line, and then a guy who just got off injury reserve on our fourth line. That's our center depth. That's less than ideal. So what's resulted in that is a lot less goals. Everyone talks about how good this team has been playing, and they have been playing good defensively. The, one of the, the real cruxes of this Winnipeg Jets team is g games get a lot more stressful than they need to be. We get the wins in the end. However, it's a war to get there sometimes. It, the game, the, for 40 minutes of hockey, it is a stressful endeavor. This time, we got the whole 60. We got the whole, the whole, the whole 63 minutes of hockey being stressful. But yeah, let's get into it. Into the second period, the Jets get the first crack in the armor as... Mason Appleton, of all people, scores make one other reaction here. Oh, we got room. We got players. Yeah! Woo! Let's go! Woo! That's big! Out of way, Apples. Fucking go. Yeah, great, great, great read there by Appleton and the forwards. It's a bad read by the Ottawa defenseman who doesn't realize that, especially with the long chains, the second that puck gets over him, it is not going to be icing. I think he realizes he's he's up Shits Creek without a paddle, and that's why he kind of goes, oh, for the love of God, please get this. Uh, but nonetheless, the Jets do take the lead on that. The rest of the second period is a little nerve-wracking. At no point did I really feel the Jets were in charge of this game. There was a couple shifts, actually. Actually, I'll take that back. There was no prolonged period of time that I felt the Jets were taking charge in this game. There were moments and flashes in the third period, which is funny because we scored in the second. But it, it took... It was always... It, it always felt like victory could slip through our fingers. Oh, so simple. Um... Now, before we get to the third period, what time is it? Moose watch! <laughs> Moose watch! So, the Manitoba Moose. The good news is, I have good news and bad news. What would you like first? The good news? Okay. The good news is I have goal clips. The bad news is that the Moose still lost. Uh, the Moose lose 5-4 to four despite leading the Grand Rapids Griffins 4-1. They also play later tonight, so uh, you could probably look around for that as well. The, the Moose had a 4-1 lead and choked it and, as, and lost 5-4 to, uh, to the Griffins. Honestly, it's funny. I think technically the Moose can make the playoffs ugly, like ugly-wise, because like the, the AHL format 
is like really, 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 like 23 teams get in. They, they need money, people. Uh, 23 teams get in. The Moose could do it. I don't think the Moose will do a damn thing in the playoffs, and I, I don't expect them to. But here, anyway, here are the lovely goal clips before, moments before the disaster. Drops it off. Long shot fought off by Kosa as Daniel Torgerson let one fly. Now he gets it to the front of the net. Caron scores! Thomas Caron, a rocket from the slot, and it's 1-1. So he dishes to Capobianco, long shot, blocked down in front, bounces to Chibrikov, he scores! Nikita Chibrikov, a power play goal, and the Moose lead 2-1. Find the Grand Rapids net, Kosa out to play it, fumbled the puck, gave it away, out in front, they score! CJ Cease, and it's 3-1 Moose. Jeff Malott out of the box, and Lundmark will try to join him, but Malott goes right to the goal, and he scores! Jeff Malott buries it up top, and it's yeah, yeah, so it's obviously nice to see, it is, no, like, nonetheless, it's nice to see guys put up points, honestly, at, at the very least. Uh, I, I'm, I'm fine with the Moose not being a good team if it means the Jets are a very good team, and that's, at this point, seemingly the trade-off. Anyway, we go into the third period, and this period took years off my life. I feel like I'm in my late 20s now. I'm in my mid-20s, so that's me. I had a moment of realization there. Where I'm like, oh my god, 23 is practically mid-20s. It's like late, early 20s? Is it like sets of three? That's how we do it. But anyway, I, I felt years tick off my life because, one, they score pretty early on here. <laughs> Shit! Shit! Uh. All right, well, brand new game now. <sighs> and then they just pressure the shit out of the Jets. Now, they just get a couple good shifts. There's one where the Velarde line get, is down low well. There's one where the Perfetti line is. Fun fact, both those names I just told you, none of them played any minutes in overtime. Why, Rick? Why do you work in such mischievous and mysterious ways? Um, we got the win, so I'm not going to complain too much, but it's just like, what the fuck, guys? Um, you know what? I want to see Fetz or Velarde center a line. If, if Chively's done for a while, I just need somebody stronger up the middle. Yes, Velarde and Lowry combined for that really nice goal against the 31... 31st team overall, Chicago Blackhawks, but I think we can do better than that, lads. I really do. Um, yeah, it's, there's a couple moments where disaster seems inevitable. Uh, there was one icing I didn't like. Uh, the refs in this game were kind of dumb, kind of dumb. They called everything in the first two periods and then nothing in the third. What the heck? Like, I, I don't get it, because there were penalties. There were penalties on us in the third period. Then I'm like, oh, that's, like, we boarded a guy. And I'm like, oh, yep, here he goes off. No call. We tripped a guy, and I went, oh, there he's going to go. No call. But no, we'll call it chinzy hooking on Cole Perfetti, that the announcer that sounded like he was a little more offended of the Apple Senators than we were, that, than, than uh, of us, went, mm, I wouldn't call that. So, yeah, it, it is what it is. Anyway, before we get into the overtime, technically this is the end of the third period. So this is where I will have our lovely, we will look, take a quick glance at the women's side of hockey. Women! 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 Yes! So, PWHA, PWHL, ugh, HA, is in full effect. There's actually a game tonight I recommend checking out on YouTube. Um, pretty much, uh, the American teams have all been pretty solid, honestly. I think, easily, uh, Kareen Schroeder, Manitoban Kareen Schroeder, has led PWHL New York in just helping them get better defensive scheming. Minnesota is a, looks like a unit. They did get upset, though. Uh, a couple days ago, but they did get a win not too long ago in overtime. And Boston's not bad either. The Canadian teams are okay. I think the best Canadian team is Montreal, though. I think. And and Toronto's not doing great. 
Poor Kirst Kristen Campbell. Kristen Campbell gets shelled every night. And they play her every night. Like, Manitoba and Kristen, Ca Kristen Campbell has nothing. Like, the gas tank's a little empty. Not because she's bad, but because you're putting her in games and then not supporting her defensive structure and then going, oh my god, let's go right back to the same well. Like, no. Put in Carly. Please. Like, I I'd like to see more people play, is all I'm going to say. Here are the lovely highlights from those games, though. Drives towards the net, shoots, and Leslie right there. Spooner scores! Toronto's goal. And it's Hannah Miller who gets the job done. Toronto scoring in the first period, something they've never done. Opening scoring. Connor's getting teed up. Now Gable, she's got Mueller right there, shoots, and they score! Boston does it, they get on the board in Toronto. After playing their hearts out to stop another Toronto goal on the other end. That rush. Got Mueller again, and a big shot by Keller, it's good! Boston scores! And it's Megan Keller who does it. Well, Megan Keller, she is so offensive, but she jumps into the holes on the ice, and this for the home team, Leslie, Rebecca Leslie, geez, and that shoots towards the front, and it's good! Toronto! Minnesota will get their first power play goal of the season, and it's Susanna Tappany letting line panic as Boulier is trying to keep it in. Panic chips it ahead. Free Zumwinkle with some room. Zumwinkle drives, looking in front, and she scores. Oh my goodness. Grace Zumwinkle has arrived, her fifth on the season. And a jailbreak at that. Welcome back, Susanna Tappany. Out comes Flaherty. Susanna Taffany, going to read the play, Daryl Watt watching Taffany. Trishova calls for it, and it'll score! Ricochets off a body in front, it'll be Susanna Taffany in overtime for Minnesota. So there was also one today, there was one earlier today, I didn't make Carter include them in the highlight packages because I felt like that'd be almost a little too long of a segment. I might put some of the big highlights in that for next time, but I didn't want to, I didn't want to cluster them all together because I didn't know how many games they have necessarily when I don't look too far in the future. But yes, we go into overtime, and I like this overtime period from the Jets. I think overall, the Jets have a very good track record in overtime in terms of being able to possess the puck more. I think they're... Now, you could also argue that's because they lack a little bit of urgency, which I, I can definitely attest to that. However... They're also not stupid. They're not just throwing pucks away for the sake of throwing pucks away. And some teams do that. And, you know, a lot of it is winning the first faceoff, which they do here. But there's a couple rushes. Like, there's two chances, I think, that are really terrifying. There's one that gets broken up, and there's one that gets stopped off Sanderson, I think it is. It's either Sanderson or Norris, and it scared me both times. However, the Jets get the job done as Nikolai Ehlers on his last gasp, it seems, out of absolutely nowhere scores to put the game away! No.
lovely. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Honestly, I'm just... Whew! I'm happy to escape with two points. I'm annoyed that Colorado keeps playing so much more games than us. Like, could you have a couple nights off? Because, like, it always they always win. They always crush somebody. Because Colorado Avalanche are funny. They're, like, the opposite of the Jets. They can't defend for nothing, but they score all the time. We don't score a lot, but we defend, like, like motherfuckers. Um, so it's like, I'll look up and I'll be like, oh, they won 7-4. Well, let's just cut back to this Jets game where it is 1-1. One one. Oh, God. Hope we get back to being first in the Central. Da-da-da. Like, am I happy we're first in the NHL? Yeah. Do, do I want it? I, I don't know. I don't think I do. I actually don't think I do. I'm kind of scared of the President's Trophy curse. I'd rather, but that being said, you have to get first in the Central. You don't have to get first in the NHL. You need to get first in the Central. That, that, those top three teams of the Central are killers, all of them. And I think we've had a bad run in with the Stars twice now. And we've gotten, we've beaten the Colorado Avalanche twice. I'm still afraid of them. <laughs> so, yeah. Couple of things the Jets can work on, obviously. Three stars of the game. Mason Appleton grabs the third star in this game. Nikolai Ehlers grabs the second star. And the first star has to go to Connor Hellebuck. Got shelled in the first half of this first, pretty much the throughout this game. Uh, honorable mention, I'd say, goes to uh, Dylan Sandberg. I liked a couple of plays that he made, honestly. There's not a lot to say. But yeah, thank you so much for tuning in. Please leave a like on the video. And uh, we'll see you next time when the Winnipeg Jets take on the Boston Bruins in Boston. Thanks for watching. One, Nicola Anders. Chips it through, gets it right.